What is good, Gray Gang? We're here today. We've had another raccoon problem. We're gonna name this guy. What should we name him? He is a raccoon, we think. Let's name him Rodney. Yeah, big Rodney the raccoon, son. He has struck again. Now, these aren't my chickens, but these are my uncle's chickens, so basically the same thing, you know what I mean? Here's what's happened. So, my uncle has some smaller chicks in these two barrels, and two nights ago, the coon actually came right here and broke this chicken's wing. And as you can tell, the chicken's no longer there because last night, he came back and finished what he started. And if you look closely right here and at this cage, you can see where he actually stuck his hand through there and drug the chicken right through here. And then after he ate that, chicken he even climbed this fence right here there's one of his claw marks right there and then got some mud right here and he stood on top of this barrel right here trying to get these guys but he didn't exactly <laughs> boy be quiet bro i'm trying to make a video of i'm telling you guys these chickens have no manners at all like bro one person at a time here one person talking at a time i can't understand everyone at once some one at a time <laughs> Okay, well, it looks like I'm just gonna have to talk a little bit louder. I guess I got them all excited. I don't know. Or maybe they're trying to tell me what actually happened last night. Maybe these eyewitnesses right here are trying to tell me something that I need to know. Now, a few years ago, I did take a chicken language class, so let me think. Let me listen, see what he's saying. Okay, that's cool. Or just not talk to him anymore. Whatever, dude. I'll figure it out myself. But as you can see, last night he struck, and I'm that positive he's going to come back tonight. So here's what we got rigged up, boys. We got this live trap right here. We had this on set not too long ago for Roger Raccoon. Now we're after Rodney. I believe it's his cousin because, you know, they both have a really good taste for chicken. But we're going to be setting that cage trap here. We're definitely out here going to set a dog proof because that's what we had to catch Roger with. Roger actually got out of that cage trap, and I'm thinking Rodney might too because I had these set last night and something took the bait and got out. So what I'm thinking, Rodney, he's just as smart as Roger. He can figure out the cage trap. The dog proof is gonna be our only option. But because I truly feel like these dog proofs are foolproof and like 100% gonna catch a coon tonight, I figured I should go a little bit in depth to tell you how I said it. Cause like, I feel like this is foolproof. I feel like this is 100%. So first things first to setting a dog proof trap, you gotta have something to stake it into. Now you can use a stake, stake it down in the ground. Personally, what I've made is I made these little cables to where I can wrap it around a tree. But as you see, you look around, there's no trees here. And I don't want to attach it to the bottom of a cage because a coon, like, bro, he'll literally take that side of the cage off. And because of that, I just got this gigantic tire. Like, it's probably 40, 50 pounds, guys. And then I just tied the trap to that. If a coon can drag that around, which I do expect him to probably pop a few holes in it which that's okay because this is an old tire it's been sitting out for a long time but i do definitely expect him to pop it i wouldn't be surprised if i come back tomorrow and he's actually in it but i do not think he can drag it off that's what's important here but as i've set you guys on my homemade tripod i'll show you how to set the dog proof so it's pretty simple right now it's in the ground but it's pretty simple here's the trap i'm just gonna pull it back set it and then cock the trigger right here set it up and just like that, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna stick it right back there in its hole. Now the way a dog proof coon trap works is, well, if you can see down in there, there's actually a metal bar. That's called the trigger. What's gonna happen is whenever I fill this up, fill it up with dog food in my case, there's actually gonna be food under the trigger, which is gonna make the coon keep going and going and going until he gets caught. But how it sets off the trap is whenever he grabs the trigger, thinking it's a piece of dog food and pulls up, it will actually push that down, letting this come up and letting these springs go forward, which just holds onto his hand like that and it just clamps down. It doesn't hurt him at all. It just holds him there until, you know, I can come back in the morning and get him. So, just like I said, guys, I'm gonna fill this up with just some dog food. You can probably do it with whole kernel corn, but dog food's just what I have right now. Just fill it up there right up to the brim. Get it right there. And then here is the secret sauce. Literally, it's sauce, apparently. It's a KFC packet of honey. They love this stuff. Like, that's what we caught Roger the Raccoon on. This was the secret stuff that got him to eventually commit. But with the secret sauce, I'm just gonna open it up over here on the corner. I'm gonna put some right down in there, right down in the trap, get the good scent going. I'm, at, I'm actually gonna come over here and put some right there on the tire just to get the scent coming out. Put a little bit more right there in the dog food, let it be melting in there. And guys, there, there, that's good. And I did only use half a packet of the honey. I would usually go all out, just put it all down in there, but I still have to set that cage trap over there just in case, you know, he prefers the cage trap tomorrow. I don't know what he's gonna want tonight, but Cleo, just please do not come and eat my dog food. Like I just set this trap and if you come eat out of it, I will probably kick you. But now over to the cage trap. We're just gonna do the same exact thing. Just, I got a little KFC thing under there. Filled it up with dog food, put some honey down in it. And then we're just gonna set it right up here against the barn. Nothing special at all. It's just honey in the back of a cage trap. But I'll tell you what really works if you just have a cage trap and you don't wanna like 
get a bunch of moving parts back there just go to the nearest gas station buy a 99 cent honey bun crack that sucker open throw it in the back of the cage you will have a coon very soon they stink and love honey buns guys anything that's got even a little bit of sweetening they just that's what coons really love and that's why in the fall whenever i make my homemade coon bait i be sure to put some vanilla extract in there because they really love that sweet stuff but as for setting this trap it's pretty simple this one's different than other traps with cage traps there's a few different locking designs but this one's just like this it's not pretty difficult whenever he steps on the pan it pulls this rod out which releases this lever and the door just goes down it's pretty simple and there it is like that i'm just going to turn it around right here make it flush with the wall just like that and to be honest guys we're good to go that's all we're going to do here and hopefully boys with that cage strap and the dog proof we should have no problem at all getting that coon tonight like honestly guys i'll say we have a 90 percent chance of catching a coon in the morning if he comes back and i mean he's been here the last two nights and he likes the taste of chicken so I'm, i have a pretty good i have a pretty good feeling he's going to be back so stay tuned to this video guys check out some merch if you want some support the channel support the race for rodney because come on dude we can't have coons around here keep eating our chickens like that's not okay but support the race for Rodney. Go to kendallgray1.com slash shop. Pick you up some merch. You can get this t-shirt, a USA shirt, a fanny pack if you want to be awesome like that. Hats even. Whatever you guys want. We got quite a lot on the site. But I'm going to go ahead, head in, take a good nap. I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, guys. It is the next day and we did catch the critter. And right down here he is. As you can see, guys, we got a possum. Now, we didn't get Rodney the raccoon, but we did get Potter the possum. You're a wizard, Harry. But he is a possum. And as you see, he's got a big old mouth. Now, on a wild animal dangerous scale for this area, I would put a coon at like a seven, but I'd put these guys at like a two. The reason isn't because they don't have big teeth. Like, as you can see, guys, they got big old teeth in there. But one thing that's different about a possum versus a raccoon is raccoons will bite you as much as they can. Possums, on the other hand, they don't bite as often. Like, you can sometimes pet a possum and not get bit. But trust me, guys, they will bite. I have a scar on my hand where I got bit by a possum last year. See right there where the arrow is? That's where I got bit by a possum like last year. He bit me right on the hand like, bro, what are you doing? That's his cousin or something. But even when possums do bite you, they're a whole lot safer than coons because these guys are one of the very few animals that can't, well, very rarely carry rabies at all. And the reason is because of their core body temperature. A possum's core body temperature is like 95 degrees average, while a coon's core body temperature is averages at about 100. These suckers right here being a lower body temperature, rabies can't really thrive in their body. Because I guess technically they're too cold-hearted to carry rabies. I mean, I guess that's just how it is, guys. They have really cold hearts. Now, as you may have noticed already, we've done got him separated out of the actual cage trap. We did catch him in this cage trap, but now we've got him, well, you know, we've got him over here in its own separate cage. Now, another big difference between coons and possums are possums are generally a lot smaller. Like this guy, I'll be honest, he probably weighs like seven pounds at the most. A big coon, he can weigh up to like 40. And because of the size difference, that may be why this, you know, this critter, this possum here, actually decided to go after smaller chickens instead of big ones. Because maybe he's not big enough to really eat a big chicken, which I'm sure he is. But what we're going to do with this guy is about the same thing as the coon. We don't need the coon. We don't need this possum. I don't want to eat him today. I don't need his fur for anything. I'm just going to take him down by the riverbank and let him go. Take him about five miles away from here and he should be good to go. And so, well, that's exactly what we're going to do, ain't it, Mr possum. Potter the possum isn't as aggressive as, uh, well, Roger the raccoon. Roger, he was out here, he was grabbing my camera, he was trying to be a vlogger. But, you know, Potter, I mean, he's just over here like, hey, bro, look at my teeth, man, I just got my braces off. What do you think about them? He's a whole lot calmer and nicer than Roger was. Roger, I had a feeling that Roger wanted to kill me. I think this guy just, like, wants to smile at me. See, we're getting right up on this guy, getting some good footage of him, and he really doesn't even care that much. I can even pet his weird-looking tail over here. See? He's not even trying to He's not even trying to grab my hand or anything. He's just sitting there like, hey, bro, what's up? But their tail is kind of weird. It's like, well, there's no fur on it. It's sort of just weird skin. Yep, pretty weird animals, but I guess it's just part of a possum. But yeah, guys, we're going to prank around with this guy. Maybe show him to Lucky a few times. See if Lucky wants to bark at him or something. Then we'll take him down to the river and see what he can do. And because I still have a little bit of doubt that that was actually the thing that was over here, I'm going to set the traps back tonight. Hopefully, we'll still get a coon. Because I'll tell you what, guys. I know there's more coons out here. If Where there's one, there's usually a lot more than just one. And I have a feeling, well, there'll be a coon back here real soon. Especially with those chicks right there chirping. They're small. See, look at these guys. I mean, they're cute and everything, but... 
They just won't shut up. And I know that I don't really speak chick that well, but I'm pretty sure what they're saying is, hey, coon, hey, coon, there's a chick over here. Come eat me. Or, you know, something of that nature. But we're gonna go ahead and get this guy taken care of. Okay, guys, it's the next day. The river's actually right over there, but we're just gonna let him loose right here. About, I don't know, probably 300 yards away. Oh, Potter the Possum, probably never been happier. Now, I will say one thing. Over the last night, he somehow broke my handle, but that is okay. We are not gonna let that stop us from releasing Potter the Possum. Now, I'm not sure how Potter is going to react to being free, but I assume it'll be about normal. Here you go. Let's do this. There you go, Potter. You're free. Potter, dude, go on. Potter, bro, you're free. Go on, Potter. Potter. There he goes. His butt's out of the cage now. I'll take the cage away and see what he does. See? Now we have a free possum. There he goes. Just, you know, walks over there and probably gonna go climb a tree and go to sleep or something. Whatever possums do now. Oh, what in the world, dude? He's already on a scent. He's already gonna track him down another chicken. The little potter, he's gonna go over there. He's right there. Now he's gonna go over there, find him a good warm spot in the weeds and chew on a stick or something. And just like that, guys, we relocated a possum from a place that he doesn't need to be to a place that I really don't care if he's here or not. And I guess that's the end of Potter's story. We'll take her little cage back home and do it again. Next time another chicken gets gone, which hopefully will be a while. But let's just be honest, it may just be tonight. And uh, just a fun fact, guys, we released Potter the Possum. Come over to the road, and I think I may have just found his cousin. Uh, the Possum family, let's just say they're not exactly prone. They're not exactly good at dodging cars. All we can do is hope that Potter does not end up the same way. Thank you guys so much for watching that video by Kim DeGray. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the post notifications. And like always, keep God number one.